All right, welcome everyone to Solomon's Crown. Back at it again with another review video. And for those of you new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because it helps the channel go a long way. Um, so we're just gonna get straight into it. Pretty much, there's been a viral situation. You've seen the pictures, the picture of Kanye and Candace Candace Owens with um, a White Lives Matter shirt. So we're here to talk about it. And especially with this uh, interview that Connie had recently with Tucker Carlson, a big Republican uh, political pundit on uh, Fox News, I believe. So let's check it out. Yep. Definitely Fox News. And we definitely got the video up. So mm -hmm. let's get it. Tonight, Kanye West, now known as Ye, is one of the best-selling musical artists in the world. He's also in recent years become a celebrated and very highly paid fashion designer. And of course, for a decade, he was well known to TV audiences as an in-law of the Kardashian family. But it's West's latest incarnation as a kind of Christian evangelist that brought us to his office in Los Angeles today for the interview you're about to see. Days ago, during Fashion Week in Paris, West, accompanied by his... And this is the... White Lives Matter shirts that we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier. Yeah. So this is what blew up on Twitter and pretty much everybody, you know. I hate to say it, but blacks were probably the number one oh yeah spreads of saying this dude is a four letter word or they called him the hard R. Yeah, or, yeah it was a raccoon and yeah, you know, they just all this went stuff. all in on him. And the thing is, is like I used to think like Candace Owens wasn't was just talking a lot of like wild stuff, which she sometimes does still say things that are just kind of like, OK, I don't 100 percent agree with it. But mm -hmm. when you actually sit down and think about the culture, the black culture and everything that. Is going on in the black community and how our leads and heads try to essentially help the black community and the black community is just like nope we're good you start mm -hmm. to you start to rationalize with some of these people so not to get on too much of a tangent let's keep on going yeah. his friend candace owens unveiled a t-shirt that read simply white lives matter the response from the fashion industry and international media was instantaneous and uniform shock horror rage there is no excuse for this, thundered the New York Times. West is legitimizing extremism, shrieked Rolling Stone, etc., etc. What was strikingly missing from the coverage, however, was any explanation for why West did this. What was the T-shirt about? No one seemed to think to ask him, much less to listen to what he had to say. Exactly. Instead, the enemies of mm -hmm. his ideas dismissed West, as they have for years, as mentally ill. Too That's... crazy to take seriously. Look away! Ignore him! He's a mental patient. There's nothing to see here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But is West crazy? You can judge for yourself as you watch what we're about to show you. He has his own ideas. We can say that. Creative people tend to. That's why they're artists, mm -hmm. not actuaries. Mm -hmm. His freeform social media posts give the impression of a man channeling his rawest emotions right onto Instagram. The effect can be jarring, and it's often used as ammunition against him in the battle for influence over the minds of America's young people. And that battle is intense. But crazy? That was not our conclusion. In fact, we've rarely heard a man speak so honestly and so movingly about what he believes. But again, mm -hmm. you can judge for yourself. Here it is. And before we get into that, Pop, you got anything? I know I kind of just interject because I'm controlling the video, but... <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. Um, so there's just a lot of things to unpack with this. So just getting into the first part of the video, you know, Kanye has always, in my opinion, been for um black empowerment. You know, the famous meme that he had when I think Bush was the president with uh Michael Myers, where he said uh George Bush doesn't care about black people. In spite of the fact that yes, he did marry a non-black person and you know, there are people here or there that might not agree with it or might say that negates his um, his need or his right to be a black, um, uh, like a Pan-African, not a Pan-African, but a, a woke person, I guess, for lack mm -hmm. of a better term. So when it comes on to Candace Owens, just real quick, um, she does speak a lot of facts, but at the same time, I think she is 
the type of person that speaks at black people and not necessarily to black people, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I think that's where a lot of, I guess, people people might like say like, yeah, she's spitting facts, but I really don't want to hear it from her yeah. kind of deal. Exactly. Um, so I've seen a change in Kanye, especially when he, you know, found Christianity, becoming a father, all this other stuff. Um, I think one of the reasons why his marriage kind of went down was because he was going a different path than his wife was. Um, so it was just one of those things where what we're about to see might be what you wouldn't expect from him wearing that White Lives Matter shirt. Right. But let's just keep on going to the video and see what happens so we can talk about it later. Yeah. So you just came from Paris Fashion Week. You just landed, and you have a lanyard still on from it, and there's a photograph on it. What is that? It's a photograph of a baby's ultrasound. Why is that? And that you designed that? Yes. Why? What does that mean? Uh, it just represents life. I'm pro-life. Boy, so you wear it on a badge. What, what kind of response do you get? And, and good, amen, I agree. I don't care about people's responses. I care about the fact that there's more black babies being aborted than born in New York City at this point. That 50% of black death in America is abortion. So I really don't care about people's responses. I perform for an audience of one and that's God. Do you understand <laughs> I'm how- I'm starting crazy. to see why they want to make- No, go ahead. Let's take, let's, let's take a pin. Do, you, do people actually understand how crazy that is? Whether or not you think your pro-life, pro-choice. Do you understand how crazy that is? In New York City, there are more black babies being killed than born. That's insane to me. Mm. Even we had, even I had a debate, not to go off too much on a tangent, but I had a debate at work and, you know, we were talking about, like, you know, whether you believe in abortion should be illegal or, or legal. And not getting into the details of that argument but i pretty much looked up the stats for it and i think it was 0.5 percent of all abortions were occluded to attributed to um grape or um like deformities 0.5 95 percent of abortions was either elective or unspecified reasons and we've covered this before when um mm -hmm. I will have to figure out which video it is, but we went into the statistics and everything where we showed um, why people actually get abortions. Mm -hmm. And most of the responses were, I'm not ready. I didn't want a kid. Uh, I want to focus on my career. And all these responses are from the women actually having the abortions. So that's not even taken into consideration if the man was about or behind them for getting an abortion mm -hmm. or if he had any say which a lot of people will go into the well my body my choice but in all reality when you decide to have sex and a woman is becomes pregnant it's i'm not going to say it's no longer her choice on whether or not she wants to have a child or not mm -hmm. but at that point it's a partnership because not only are you slaughtering a unborn child that's a harsh way to say it but um or you're aborting a a child you're not giving a man the decision and the choice to become a father a provider or he doesn't have a choice in general you're taking away his choice so we talk about equal rights and everything like mm -hmm. that and i just feel that at that point it's not a woman's choice whether she is going to have or not have this child because at that point a man's a man becomes almost a father in that instant mm -hmm. at least until the I mean there are health complications and things like that and we're not talking about the situations like the 0.5 percent where it's a trauma traumatic event traumatic event sorry I can't speak uh, traumatic event or uh, a force upon thing we're talking about a situation where two consenting adults had sex the woman becomes pregnant 
And then mm -hmm. now these two individuals need to make a decision on whether this child is going to be born or aborted. And for the most part, it's always, well, my body, my choice, and the mm -hmm. woman is the major decider in that. And I don't think that that should be the situation because men, as much as they downplay men, a lot of men do want to have children and be providers and take care of their women. So that's just us getting on a rant real quick, but let's keep on going with this video. Mm -hmm. You be quiet. Um, how, when did you start to feel this way? When did you start to realize this? I, I really felt like, I think I started to really feel this need to express myself on another level when Trump was running for office and I liked him yes. and every single person in Hollywood from my ex-wife to my mother-in-law to my manager at that time to you know my my so-called friends slash handlers around me told me like if I said that I like Trump that my career would be over that my life would be over uh, they said stuff like people get killed for wearing a hat like that they threatened my life they put my life they basically said that I would be killed and that's another thing too is okay this was a different moment in Kanye's life what I hate mm -hmm. is he was going through whatever he was going through during that time we can see that Kanye is a lot better than what he was from that point to this point yet mm -hmm. everybody will only hold him accountable for that point in his life and I think that's a big thing that we also need to take into consideration is while he was still articulating what he actually wanted to say and how he wanted to express himself it just didn't come off right but now he is trying to or he's I feel like Kanye is probably at the best point mentally that he has been for a while right now so with him doing wild and crazy shit as other people would say like wearing white lives matters to a fashion show it's a statement that's what we have to look at is like it's a statement why did he make this statement but nobody wants to get to that point they just want to nope. like he's wearing white lives matter he's a whatever derogatory term you want to use and mm -hmm. he also supported trump and then like all types of things but let's keep going uh for uh wearing the hat I had a, uh, someone call me last night and said, anybody wearing a White Lives Matter shirt is gonna be green lit. And that means that they're gonna beat them up if they wear it. And I'm like, you know, okay, green light me then. <laughs> and that's another thing too, is like, we talked about it where it's like, you can't even, like imagine wearing that shirt in any hood, any like location where there are actually blacks that are aggressive and non-conforming. They're literally getting killed. Gonna, yeah, they you're might kill, kill you or they're just going to beat you up off principle, off of just saying like a statement. But that's neither here or there. This, that's just something that a lot of people don't realize that that is an everyday occurrence that could possibly happen to you. And people are like, oh, no, that's crazy. People still think that that's crazy that you can wear a White Lives Matter shirt and actually get beat up on a subway in a ditch and die. Mm -hmm. and it's, that deters a lot of people away from actually expressing themselves even if they actually believed in what he said like you could just put that on instagram and you probably get blacklisted as he said or um mm -hmm. like people would look at you differently and start like harassing you almost so you know you know god builds warriors in a different way i don't know if it's because of me being a born in atlanta and growing up on the south side of Chicago that, you know, he made me for such a, such a time like this. It's like with David, you know, he tended to the sheep, but while he was out there, he had to fight all kinds of animals. So when it was time for Goliath to come, he thought because he was a sheep herder that he didn't have the skill set to take down Goliath. And the thing that I have is the position, I have my heart, but the number one thing is we have God on our side. And for the people, even if you don't believe in God, God believes in you. So you made reference to the White Lives Matter t-shirt, mm -hmm. which you brought out at Paris Fashion Week. Yeah. Why, wh why did you do that and what did it mean? You know, I, did, I do certain things from a feeling. I like 
I just, I just channel the energy, it just feels right. It's using a gut instinct, a connection with God, and just brilliance. You know, like as if you ask like Tanya Harding how she did the, the triple flip or the triple spin, yeah. she was in so much practice that when it was time for her to skate in a, in a, comp, in a competitive format, it just happened. Like it happened outside of practice. It happened in the real format. And that's what hap that's what's happening is God is like preparing us for the real for the real battles. And we are we are in a battle with the media. Like the majority of the media has a, a godless agenda and the jokes are not working. This whole like, oh yeah, he's crazy and all these things, they don't work because the media has, you know, they've also watch travesties happen, just even specifically to me, and just watch it and act like it wasn't happening, and they stay quiet about it. Uh, what have they, so, what have they what, I wanna answer the, the white, yeah. I, I feel like someone caught what I was saying, the comparison of Tanya Harden about the, the White Lives Matter. You know, my dad is a educated um, ex-Black Panther, and he put a text to me today, he said, white lives matter, ha, 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 ha. And I said, I thought the shirt was a funny shirt. I thought the idea of me wearing it was funny. And I said, dad, what do you think mm -hmm. it was funny? He said, just, just a black man stating the obvious. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, my dad doesn't listen to rap music and he's like super educated. We, we opened up a water distribution center in the Dominican Republic together. He's like the original Steve Jobs, but he was getting blocked every which way with all of his ideas. And he didn't have uh, an endless bank account and he didn't have an Instagram. So all these ideas, he had to like take them back and compress mm -hmm. them. Like my dad is the most brilliant person that I know. And we actually have a strained relationship because I was taken from him because my mom was an actress, so she was a liberal. And my dad would see certain things and say, you know, we should do it this way, we should do it that way. And oh, the people damn. got around my mom and pulled her away, much like Kim is a Christian, uh -huh. but she has people who want her to go to Interview Magazine and put her ass out while she's a 40-something-year-old multi-billionaire with four black children. And this is what, how fashion wants to uh, how they want to present her. So I know you give these, um, you get these questions and I give you like these three part answers. Is this a cool format for you? Yeah, I love it. it. Okay, cool. And I am following it. All right. So you said um, that your father said when he saw the shirt, White Lives Matter, it's great to see a black man stating the obvious. So, so the other thing I like is like, we have a black man and a white man, both of status, having a conversation. Mm-hmm. They're not arguing, they're hearing each other out, they're listening, and they're having a conversation. And this is something that we have gone so far from because most of the stuff on social media is always an argument. You see anything about relationships, argument. You see anything about red pill content, argument. You see anything about women and masculinity and toxic masculinity, it's always an argument. And most of these people are trying to have conversations like this. But we never get to that point because as soon as they hear certain words or as soon as you say something that doesn't agree with them or align or you even them, see certain people or just seeing certain people is like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I'm not having a conversation because you believe that this person is right. Uh, we have the wash guy who's done what is a woman. We have Andrew Tate, who's toxic masculinity and misogynistic. We had uh, Kevin Samuels, who doesn't talk to women in a professional manner and yeah. he low-key started degrading them as some women would say yeah, but, sneako now yeah sneako's been banned like even just pearly things who was a woman who advocates for men's health and men in general being understood by women and trying to help women understand that they cannot yeah. get all the things that they want and be the way that they are if they're following everything in social media we just she got see. banned off of TikTok, so it's only a matter of time where she gets banned yeah. off everything too. So, and the thing is, it's more so that anybody who talks bluntly or talks 
in a form that may somewhat offend somebody is just banned because people don't want to hear harsh truths. And I want to find the quote where it's like, tell them harsh truth or tell them sweet. I won't even do it now. I'll just do it later. By which I think you meant that's obviously true. Yeah, that my favorite response, because I kept on thinking like, you know, people, they're looking for an explanation and people say, well, as an artist, you don't have to give an explanation, but as a leader, you do. Yes, I think that's right. So the answer to why I wrote White Lives Matter on a shirt is because they do. It's the obvious thing. Yeah. Why, why do you think that's so, and, and I assume the implication is, of course, all lives matter because they're lives, because God created them. Yeah. Why do you think that that would be considered controversial? Because the same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black and the vernacular that we're supposed to have. My dad grew up as a military brat and his family moved around, but they were based mostly in Delaware. And at the time, if he, if he wasn't, if they weren't the only black family, they were one of the few. And he would be discriminated against because he was black. So by the time he got into college, he would be discriminated against. He went to a black college. He would be discriminated against because they said he talked too white. Yes. And then he played the kick drum in the band. So when he would go to the club and the music was playing, where would he clap mm -hmm. his hands? Where the kick drum is. Yeah. So it was the opposite of where everyone else right, exactly. was clapping their hands. <laughs> and uh, this is the most elegant and tasteful person that I know. So and... I want to stick a pin here. Mm -hmm. So for those of you guys that's watching, if you don't get anything out of this video, I want you guys to understand this. In my opinion, and I'm going to say this, I think that black culture has been the most degenerate that it's ever been in my little 30 plus years of life. So it, it And just in general, society has been devolving, in my opinion, but I think Black culture especially. So all the, you know, what's being promoted, um, you know, in that, in his, in his example, right, where his father, you know, being discriminated against because he was Black, then speaking white in Black schools, I've gotten called that, um, all sorts of stuff. It's like, why is it in the black community that talking properly, um, being educated, being curious, intellectually, like academically curious, not wanting to be a Pookie and Ray Ray, why is that, you know, put down and being a degenerate, being a thug, or for females being a hoe, um, all being vulgar and all this stuff praised? Because... And people don't, and people don't see people like it's, it's not clicking that all this stuff that's being promoted is, is destroying us because never in my life have I seen so many like female artists come out and all these female artists are damn near the same, um, hip hop music. We usually, you know, we came from people like most deaf, black thought, um, black star, um, you know, all these like common, all these guys that were like speaking up against the ills of the of America and how it affected black people, the plight of poor people, like, you know, black liberation, black struggle. And now we have these myriad of people, either the dudes are like wearing purses, um, colored fingernails and talking about popping perks and running trains and all this other stuff and then you have these females talking about oh um my wop this um i'm going to you know hit a lick and getting money and all this stuff even glorilla like she got bt like female artist of the year yeah, artist of the year and it's like really i mean not a knock against her like 
she's making money, she's successful, but is this is what we're gonna push? Well, we're not gonna push R and B artists or like any of that stuff. Like no. It's, and it's the thing crazy, is, like, man. she got artists, so it's like, out of all the female artists that put out music this year, that was the most influential. So she beat up Baby Keem. There's no way that one that yes, Baby there's Keem was no a runner. Way. Baby Keem was a runner up for um Artist of the Year. You can look it up. It was runner up for Artist or BT whatever award. Bro, that she beat Baby Keem. That album was fire. Like for a new artist and. What we've been getting from new artists, like, but that's besides the point. Um, that's besides the point, but it's it's people like black people need to wake up, man. It's black because uh, if you do any of these things, is such as talk proper, uh, go to school, do all these things, you feel you're you're better than you, you as that. We're person not though. Like, We're not though. That's how people see it. And like, if I'm wrong, somebody can tell me in the comment box is why the nerdy dude or the dude who wants to be better, the guy who wants to get out of the hood is literally treated differently from the dude on the corner selling weed, selling pop, or selling perks, selling pills, all types mm-hmm. of stuff. Because as people have said, like most of these dudes who sell drugs in the streets would be very good business yeah. men and women or entrepreneurs because they have that mentality to be like yo i'm gonna get this product out this is how i'm gonna distribute it this is how i'm not gonna get caught mm-hmm. you apply that to a business and i think the biggest thing is misconceptions and miseducation because, a, but no, not, not to interrupt you but there's legit a person like that i follow him on instagram religiously um i think his handle is uh wall street trapper he was literally a drug dealer that i think he got went to prison like twice mm-hmm. someone actually mentored him a father figure actually mentored him and put him on game and he came out and now he's like oh, killing it that's the dude who was uh talking about he went to jail and then his white cellmate told him like this is, yeah yeah he was like this is why you're never gonna survive in the streets and this is what you should do and this is what white people do yeah i know exactly what you're talking about and yeah. he talks about, oh, you need to put your money in stocks and bonds. And then once you, even if you're not doing that, put your money into real estate. And then once you get real estate, then you move to the next step. And I've seen it happen. And the thing is, like, it's always projected on uh, social media as being something that's easy. No, some of these people, they built their wealth up over the course of five to 10 years. And that's why it's always good to have a year plan, a five year plan, a 10 year plan, because none of this stuff is going to come to you immediately. We started this mm-hmm. podcast. I think oh, we need to figure out when our year to date is, but about a year ago and yeah. truthfully in the past three months is the only time we've been getting a decent amount of buzz. But like we went through a lot of trial and error oh, yeah. to get to this point where we can actually put a video that sees more than seven views. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, it's just, it's, I don't, I don't know what it is. I look at black culture in general and it's, it's not looking it's not looking good in my opinion, but yeah. let's let's finish the video. When my mom when they when when the school suggested it, like the hurting systems, because what they do is take the um, the black community and they separate us and they separate the families and the educated uh, they, they you know they push this you know, need for higher education. And us as blacks, we discriminate against each other and say, well, I got my PhD and you don't have your PhD, so I'm better than you. And so my mom, she had a PhD and she was influenced to uh, move to the south side of Chicago and take this job at Chicago State University. And she told my dad, if you come, if you come for us, you know, you'll never see him again. Because, you know, the media ridiculed me for getting the house next door to Kim to see my children. And they even said that I was stalking her and her new boyfriend because I bought the house next door to see my children. And I, that's, that's how I knew that, that, uh, that my mom had said that to him. I said, Dad, you know, they moved us to one of the most danger, agreed upon to be one of the most dangerous places in the world. It's almost like they tried to kill me or something. Uh, I said, Dad, why didn't you ever Why'd you never come to get us? And that's when he told me, that's when he told me that she was told that. You know, there's so many things that are put in Kim's head. You know, they bring influencers, like no one ever knew where 
Corey Gamble came from. No one in the fashion world knows where Gabby came from. These people were practically made in a laboratory, in my opinion. And one of the things that they're really good at doing is being nice and being likable. And what they do is for people that have some form of influence, whether it's an educated black woman like my mother that became the head of the English department at Chicago State University, or whether it's the most influential uh, white woman on the planet being my ex-wife, they have people that are around them at all times telling them what mm -hmm. to be afraid of. It's like not yeah. what to do or say specifically, it's what to be afraid of. And if you have a person that isn't afraid of them, you know, like a Russell Brand or yeah. Candace Owens. Right. Or, it's not that we have to agree right. no. with this, but they're not afraid. They're not afraid to state what their opinion is. Yes. Everyone, no one is God and everyone has an opinion. So a conversation like this is a window into a world that you don't see. So if you're familiar with West from the media, you think of him as an individual man. What you don't think about is that he is at the center of a battle and people like him are at the center of a battle to get a message out. Mouthed by the lips of influencers like him and so many others that extends a storyline on behalf of, well, in this case, the status quo. So there are a lot of people vying to make certain that people like him say the right things. And the consequences for not doing that are very severe. So for him to come out and say all lives matter, obviously, is a huge threat to a lot of people. Who are those people exactly? Well, we asked him, and he told us. That's next. It's a lot to I take mean, in. <laughs> it's a lot to take in. So I mean, specifically, as I said before, I think on top of the, I guess, the powers that be, as they, as they would say, it's almost a badge of honor for Black people to be oppressed. Like, we love trauma. I think the only thing we know is trauma. We, we, we wear oppression with a badge of honor because at the end of the day, when you look at it, what does him wearing a, a, white, a white Lives Matter shirt do? Nothing, to be honest. Because look at, because look at the BLM, right? Not not the movement or the sentiment, but get the actual organization. The leader is a is a well known self declared Marxist. They made over sixty million dollars as a nonprofit. Do you know the implications of being a nonprofit organization is? Nope, but you probably shouldn't be making that much money. So, I know as a nonprofit, no, you should not. But being a nonprofit means that you're tax exempt. Just like a church is a nonprofit organization, and a lot of these mega churches make bukus of bucks, but they don't get taxed. That's another, you know, talk for next time. But they made sixty sixty million dollars, or probably more than that, tax free. They, um, according to uh, realclearpolitics.com, Patrice Colors, I think, bought a six million dollar mansion. Or let's see, let me get my my uh yeah six million dollar mansion in toronto as a headquarters so they can have meetings um it's been found out that that same person bought a couple of million dollar houses in a gated white community so and that's 60 million dollars in particular pretty sure they made more than that the 60 million dollars in particular was made specifically to help black poor black people the worst that part about dollars? that is like People who follow the Black Lives Matter movement are hella silent about it. And a lot of people mm -hmm. aren't even, they're making it into, oh, this is a conspiracy. They would never do that. They're just trying mm -hmm. to bring the movement down. And they're just so caught up in it that it's like wild. And people were saying that, like, um, you know, oh, shoot. But we'll, we'll continue right this talk. We'll be right back at commercial break. Facts. <laughs> 